components of the HPLC system to provide mobile phase. We are using the mobile phase reservoir. In this mobile phase reservoir, we are placing the mobile phase. If any bubbles or air bubbles are dissolved gases will be there. To remove that, we are using degassing units. After the mobile phase is passing through the pumps to provide the high pressure to the mobile phase, with the, this high pressure, the mobile phase is traveling with the high speed towards the station, stationary phase of the column. Then, sample injector to the flow of the mobile phase, we are injecting the sample, a mixture of sample. The sample and mobile phase, then they are going to the columns. We are having two columns. One is God column and analytical column. So the separation occurs in the analytical column. So to maintain the proper temperature around the column, the static column movements we are using. So the separated compounds, now the eluted compounds are passing through the detector. Where the compounds are detected, then the detected compounds are integrated by using the recorders and integrator in the form of a chromatogram. So the mobile phase waste container will collect the whatever the mobile phase is traveling through the column. So these are the different parts of HPLC. Now, this is the one black diagram of HPLC we are using now. So this is the a solvent reservoir or mobile phase reservoir. So, and here a degassing spraying will be there, a degassing unit will be there and we are placing the, the mobile phaser solvents in this reservoir. From this reservoir, now the solvent or mobile phase is traveling towards the pump. So when it will be reached to the pump, the solvent will be delivered with the high velocity and it will be movement with the high pressure. So when it will be moving to the high pressure, to the flow of the mobile phase, we are injecting the sample. So this is an injection wall. We are having two types of injection system, manually and auto sampler injections will be there. We can use either of any one. Now the sample, injected sample and the mobile phase, now they are passing through the analytical column. Passing through the analytical column, where the separation will be occurred. After, depending upon the relative affinity, different compounds will be eluted at different times then it will be reached to the detector. So at the detector, it will be detects the how much amount of the compound will be there and at what time the compound is eluted. Then it will be go to the recorder. In the recorder, it will be give a chromatogram and the remaining mobile phase, whatever it will be there, the fractions are collected in a waste reservoir. This is a black schematic representation of a high performance liquid chromatography. So here we are giving one uh, example how we are getting here. So a solution mixture will be there. In this solution mixture, we are having three different type of compounds are represented with the different colors with the green color, blue color and red color. Now these compounds are injected. So this is the mobile phase. The mobile phase with the help of the pump, we are pumping the mobile phase at a flow rate of 0.3 ml per minute. So the flow rate is important. What flow rate the mobile phase is moving towards the stationary phase, nothing but column. And the mobile phase is traveling towards in this direction. So meanwhile, we are injecting the sample, a mixture of sample. So when we are injecting the, whatever the sample solutions in the form of liquid, they are mixing with the mobile phase. Now the mobile phase, and the samples are moving towards the stationary phase. Depending upon the affinity, if the affinity will be less towards the stationary phase, the compounds are moving faster. So here, the blue color compounds will be there. They are having less affinity. That's why they're traveling very fast. So they are reaching detector first, after that red color, after that green color. So when the sample is reached to the detector, automatically we are getting a one peak. So first, which, which one is reached to the detector means the compound which is in the somewhat blue color. 
so that's why first which compound is separated which compound is eluted blue color then red color then green color in this way three compounds are there in the chromatogram we are getting the three peaks and at a certain time we are getting the peaks so in the x axis we are taking the time nothing but retention time and y axis we are taking the peak area area under the curve so at what minutes the peaks are separated so in this way it is very useful to identify and separate and quantify the compounds with the help of the chromatogram what we are getting from the recorder so when we are analyzing during that we can easily identify the compounds and quantify the compounds first we are discussing the mobile phase reservoirs the mobile phase reservoirs or mobile phase bottles should be chemically inert should be clean so whatever the mobile phase reservoirs we are using they should be free from foreign particle it should be have in a clean manner and we have to use the high quality material to prepare a mobile phase reservoir to cons to manufacture a mobile phase reservoirs high quality glass bottles are used as a mobile phase reservoirs generally so whatever the reservoirs mobile phase bottles are reservoirs we are using like this in the industry they are withstand with the high temperatures and chemically inert degassing units so before we are introducing our mobile phase into the hplc system we have to degas if any foreign part foreign gas dissolved gases or any air bubbles will be there if you are not remove they will be the they will be pass along with the mobile phase towards the column and the air bubbles will be block or damage the column so to avoid that one we have to remove the whatever the dissolved gases or air bubbles prior to introduce into the hplc system the degassing is de done by following methods in this first method by passing inert gases like helium or nitrogen by applying vacuum by ultrasonication so in the ultrasonications are nothing but we are using ultrasonicator we are keeping our mobile phase reservoirs which containing mobile phase in the sonicator for a certain time during this due to the a mechanical vibrations from the sonicator the dissolved gases will be removed next pumps now the mobile phase is passing through the pumps so we are having different type of pumps mechanical pumps and pneumatic pumps the mechanical pumps widely used as they maintain accurate and constant flow and in this we are having different type syringe type of pumps and reciprocating pipes pneumatic pumps are there they maintain constant pressure generally the most commonly used pressure ranges from 4000 1000 to 4000 psi pascal square per inch psi means pascal square per inch in pumps we are having a single pump will be there a binary grade pumps also available so this is the different type here two pumps are there for one solvent one pump for another solvent another pump so binary grade pump we are showing in the figure so now the mobile phase is with high pressure passing towards the stationary phase or column in between a injection system will be there this injection system used to inject the liquid samples in injection systems we have septum type is there stop flow type is there rayod and injectors are there sam in septum type sample can injected through a rubber septum in stop flow type we have to stop the flow of mobile phase for a certain time while we are injecting the sample after injecting the sample again we have to continue the flow of the mobile phase stop flow time we are stopping the mobile phase for few seconds while we are injecting the sample in rayodent type of injecting system these are also called as loop injecting systems are loop type of injectors in this we are having two positions are there first position is load position in second position injecting position in load position 
the we are injecting the sample with the help of this syringe into a one loop we are loading the sample into a loop so during the load, load position so when we are rotating the that riodine injectors from the load position to injection position that time the compound is the whatever the liquid mixture sample is move injected into the column so load position we are loading the sample in injection position the sample is injected into the column so this is the different type of injecting systems we are using next is column in the column so the mobile phase and the injected sample dissolve they are mixed each other they are passing towards the column in this column we are having god column and analytical column so the main important of the god column as the name suggests the god column will be protect the analytical column where the separation will be occurs in analytical column only the separation occurs so before the sample and mobile phase uh, moving enter into the analytical column before that we are placing on god column the god column is placing in between the injector and the analytical column so when we are injecting the mobile sample if any foreign particles or impurities will be present in the sample if any even though we are degassing the mobile phase sometimes there is chance of foreign particles will be there so they will be block the analytical column to avoid that one before they are entering into the analytical column with the help of the god column we have to remove and and uh, stop the impurities and the suspended solids from the mobile phase without any interruption they will be go to the analytical column we have to remove the suspended and impurities from the reaching the analytical column generally the guard column here so this is the guard column and this is the analytical column so before the analytical column we are placing a guard column so first the mobile phase and the sample they are entering into the guard column if any suspended particles are there they stop it there only only the mobile phase with the analytes are entered into the analytical column in general the length of the guard column is 2 cm internal diameter is 4.6 mm the particles in the column we are using some stationary phase material same stationary phase material we are using the guard column and analytical column but there is a size difference will be there here generally the size particle size is around 40 micrometers will be there next analytical column the length of analytical column is 5 to 30 cm diameter is 2 mm to 5 mm the particle size is 1 to 20 micrometers only so here we are having different type of analytical columns what type of material we are packing in the analytical column so this is the packing material somewhat ash color will be there this is the stationary phase material what type of stationary phase material we are packing in the column this is the column supporting material this is the entire column in this column we are column packing met or stationary phase material will be there column supporting material will be there generally used column supporting materials are stainless steel and peak peak is nothing but poly ether ether ketone poly ether ether ketone the stainless steel on the stainless steel in the stainless steel inner coat is coated with the peak then the column is filled with the stationary phase materials if you are filling the normal phase uh, stationary phase nothing polar stationary phases like like silica gel and alumina that time the columns are called as normal phase column in the reverse phase columns we are packing with the non polar materials like ods octa decal silane c18 c8 nitrile phenyl column these are the different type of columns based on the what type of stationary phase material whether the stationary phase material is polar or non polar next the columns are size exclusion columns here the separation occurs depending upon the filtration ion exchange columns so in the columns we are filling with the ion exchange regions in chiral columns so these are the different type of analytical columns 
so the analytical column sub whatever the column will be there whether is god column or analytical column the supporting material is made up of stainless steel and poly ether ether ketone so based on what type of material we are packing in the column we are having different type of analytical columns like normal phase columns reverse phase columns etc 